Good afternoon, everyone. I'm John Finnegan, Dean of the School of Public Health, and I am honored to be with you today to celebrate the class of 2021. Now, before we begin, I want to first acknowledge the University of Minnesota, the Twin Cities campus, lies within the traditional homelands of the Dakota people. We honor them as the forebears of all who have come here, and we acknowledge past wrongs committed against the people on whose land we live, we learn, and we work. We also seek actively to strengthen relations and to build partnerships through higher education to benefit our American Indian students, staff, faculty, and community members. And depending on where you are in the world, I should also say good morning or good evening. It is afternoon here in Minnesota. I believe that we can all agree that this past year presented challenges like no other, that our students have overcome myriad obstacles to get to this graduation day. So on behalf of the school and its faculty and its staff, I offer you, our students, heartfelt congratulations on your achievement. Whatever we faculty in this great SPH achieve, it is our amazing graduates that are among our most important gifts to the future. I also want to greet our students, family, and our friends who are joining this virtual celebration and to thank you for the support that you gave your student this year. They needed that support. And I know that you helped them to weather some difficult times. Since our students come from across the globe, I'm sure that many of you are viewing this ceremony from locations all over the planet. I encourage you to follow us on social media and to post a congratulatory message of your own by using the hashtag SPHGRAD, SPHGRAD. It is a major accomplishment to achieve an advanced professional or graduate degree in the best of times. In the midst of a pandemic, it's extraordinary. As we protected ourselves and others from COVID-19, so many things changed in the way that our students learned, engaged, and contributed. And as we move to a remote reality, in-person meetings with faculty advisors and mentors all went virtual. Online learning became the reality for almost everyone, a decision made to keep our students, faculty, and staff as safe and as healthy as we possibly could. This shift has had some advantages. Students could easily record lectures or discussions they could uh, attend meetings in their sweatpants, or they could have their cat on their lap while discussing the social determinants of health. But the in-person, face-to-face human contact was missing, and that was difficult. Students that love the to and fro of lively conversations missed those interactions, and so did the faculty, and forming bonds with, other, with others was a little harder. Yet the word of the past year was perseverance. And our students showed that quality every single day. As one student wrote to me in an email, despite everything, I truly feel a part of this school and public health. I am immensely proud of the resilience and creativity of our students and of our entire public health community. This past year, we came face to face with another public health emergency, racism. It has been woven into the fabric of our society since European ancestors landed on these shores more than 400 years ago. And it remains the fundamental cause of health inequities yet today. When George Floyd was murdered by policeman Derek Chauvin on May 25th, 2020, less than five miles from this campus, the lived experience of racism that black people suffer in this country became visible yet again 
in its raw brutality and oppression. Many of our students and we faculty, staff, and leaders were compelled to examine our own feelings, our own beliefs, and how we ourselves have inadequately addressed the challenges of structural racism. And we have to continue to think hard about the role of public health in changing our country's future. Public health students engaged in public protest and had to work doubly hard to keep up with their studies as they demanded equity and justice. Many of the students graduating today chose public health because of its potential to help create better lives for everyone. We believe that health is a human right, and that means constant and active commitment to dismantle the policies and the systems that prevent health and well-being for all. I joined the school as a research assistant more than 40 years ago. I served as a staff person and later as a faculty member. And it has been my deep honor and privilege to serve as dean of this school since 2005. So this is my 17th and last commencement before the arrival of the next dean of the school sometime later this year. So far, there have been seven deans in the school's 77-year history, and I do not doubt that every one of them saw evidence of great change. We have seen the framing of racism in public health grow from disparities to equity to anti-racism. We moved from the analog world headlong into the digital world, which continues to unfold ahead of us. And that alone has changed so much about research, education, and engagement. And of course, in the way that we communicate and we learn. We've seen academic public health transform the way that it engages with communities at home and around the world. We've moved from doing research on populations and communities to working with them. From the researcher being the only expert to the researcher being the learner and the partner. Students who graduate today have the tools and the skills to be perhaps the most effective, engaged generation of public health leaders. For all of us, education is never complete. Our world needs these new leaders as we confront so many pressing issues now labeled correctly as public health emergencies. We always need to start sooner, what we call going upstream to alter the factors that stand in the way of people living full and healthy lives. Yet when crises do emerge, public health leaders need to be flexible, quickly turning their attention to the critical issues that are at hand. I know that our graduates are up to that challenge. In your commencement program, you will see that some students are identified as members of the Delta Omega Honorary Society in Public Health. I'm a member myself. The society was founded in 1924 at Johns Hopkins University, and there are now more than 100 chapters throughout the United States and abroad. Our Pi chapter has more than 800 students, faculty, and alumni members. Membership in Delta Omega reflects an individual's dedication to increasing the quality of our field, as well as the protection and advancement of health for all people. Members are chosen through a selective process that considers their outstanding performance and their devotion to the field. Please join me in congratulating this year's student inductees. Now we have a great ceremony planned for you today, and many speakers will join me here live from Northrop Auditorium, and a few via pre-recorded video. You can follow along in the commencement program, which is available on our school's website. Please enjoy the ceremony as we honor and celebrate the most extraordinary class of 2021. And now, let me introduce our keynote speaker, Ms. Lois Pace. 
Lois Pace is the Director of Global Affairs for the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services. She is an outspoken advocate for global health, equity, promoting policies and programs from AIDS to Zika. And having worked and lived on the ground in more than 15 nations across three continents, her efforts are rooted in years of partner partnering with a wide range of government and grassroots stakeholders. Ms. Pace most recently served as President and Executive Director of Global Health Council and was also a member of the Biden-Harris Transition COVID-19 Advisory Board. She holds a bachelor's degree with honors in human biology from Stanford University and a master's degree in public health from Johns Hopkins Bloomberg School of Public Health. Ladies and gentlemen, graduates, please welcome Lois Pace. Well, thank you very much for having me today. I feel incredibly honored to have received the invitation to address your graduating class. And I should start off by saying congratulations to each of you uh, for making it to this point. I know it hasn't been easy, particularly in the past year, given what we've all endured and yet the world is ready and waiting for you. So thank you in advance for your incredible service. And I have to also thank Dean Finnegan uh, for his years of service as well, uh, serving you all, recognizing that this will be his final commencement and he'll be retiring later this year. So hopefully it's not premature uh, to wish, wish the Dean well uh, in this transition that I'm sure is well-deserved. Uh, it's just such an honor to be able to touch the lives of students throughout one's career. I know that it's something that I strive to do in my own, and I'm sure he's uh, done quite well in that regard. And finally, I have to give my greetings to Trish Alexander, a student speaker who will take the stage after me. I am glad to go before her because I'm sure that she will bring the fire with what she has to share with you all. It's pretty incredible and impressive to get to this point and finally graduate and somehow find the reserves to uh, deliver inspiration and wisdom uh, to one's classmates and future colleagues. And so I'm already a fan, Tricia, uh, good luck. I will be also ready and waiting for you uh, to teach me something new with what you have to share afterwards. But I won't uh, belabor uh, too much longer. I uh, will gladly get into what I have to share with you all today. Again, thanks for having me. It has been a pretty interesting time to work in public health, as I'm sure you all can imagine, and maybe you've heard um, from your instructors or even experienced yourselves, uh, for those of you who are working while earning this, this particular degree. The world now hopefully understands the value of public health uh, and what we each bring to the table. And, uh, and it's, it's really a privilege uh, to be able to serve in this capacity. And yet it's, it's hard and it's heavy and there's a lot that comes with it. And one of the things that does keep me up at night is this question of the story that we will tell whenever we're on the other side uh, of this experience uh, we've all endured over the past 15 months or so. At some point, COVID will end, or this version of what we've been living through will. And I think we will all ask ourselves, what happened, right? Now, what role did we play? Did it work? Did it matter? Uh, frankly, it's helpful to ask that question now in my mind. And so it is something that I've been doing actively myself, if only as a coping strategy, right? To imagine a future um, outside of the current state uh, and, and wonder about the, the stories that we'll tell each other for ourselves. And I am even hoping that some of you will ask that question of people like me, honestly, uh, knowing that you are entering this workforce with your own questions in this regard and that you have the choice uh, to either celebrate or criticize um, what's happened. Know that that's something I'm open to hearing, as should others be uh, in this space and hopefully you will be once you take up the mantle yourselves. So as, as these questions come up, uh, I think first off, it's important 
for me to, to explain why that's been so much my focus. Uh, it's really been because naturally our discussions, our deliberations, our decisions have consequences. And we've seen this play out a lot over the past year, right? Uh, we, we know this uh, in, in effect, um, and we, we've always um, believed this to be true and yet we've actually seen it in action. Uh, real time. And so uh, what, for example, has it looked like for us to have declared a global health emergency? Uh, there were even a lot of questions swirling around what and when to declare a pandemic, um, let alone the idea of, or the, uh, the mandate even, to wear masks or to keep one's distance uh, and how you communicate that effectively to the general public. Um, alongside a lot of those uh, public health recommendations uh, were the decisions to close borders or schools or businesses. And of course that had ripple effects uh, around the world. It was intended to affect the pandemic, surely, um, but also had uh, incredible socioeconomic consequences. And, and yet how the, the public at large received this, those who don't, uh, spend their lives steeped in science or politics uh, or both uh, was also really important to keep in mind. And we're not always uh, equipped to handle that as public health professionals. And yet this was essential uh, to understand. And it was important in getting people to actually act on what we imparted and to trust us as experts, as leaders uh, in this space. So, uh, given all these questions that were swirling and frankly continue to, to come our way, uh, instead of trying to uh, impart in this one uh, speech the answers I would provide, I think I would like to step back and share um, the, the ways that I sort of ground myself given um, the, the swirl of, of questions and considerations. The, Fact is, we don't always have all of the answers, or not necessarily when we want to have them. And that's been a part of public health this past year as well, is this openness to the evolving nature um, of the pandemic and our response to that. And that can be frustrating, um, including for practitioners ourselves. And yet, that is our reality. So, what are the principles that we can use uh, to center ourselves and to know that, again, if and when we look back on this moment, we did our best for the most, right? Because that's really what our charge is as social servants, is, is ensuring that we're showing up in the right way for people at the most important time and it's in such a time as this. So one of the principles I, I find myself leaning on is the, the importance of applauding science. And this is our opportunity to tell sort of a good news story because we don't focus as much on that, I think. And we can definitely talk about a lot of the unproductive debates um, that have taken place around things like wearing masks or even working with WHO. Uh, and those are important, right? Because those offer their own lessons learned. And yet there are some really important lessons about what worked too. And I think in particular, when we think about the ways that researchers and practitioners and innovators have come together to develop these important products now that are saving lives. That's huge, right? And that's built on decades of investments and relationships and everything in between that allowed for it to happen. But we have a vaccine, several vaccines actually, um, in a matter of a year, right? After, after even learning what this virus is, uh, let alone therapeutics and diagnostics that can also help us in the fight. And so I just think that, you know, it's important to acknowledge the, the promise of, of science real time. It's really, it's really demonstrated what happens when public health leaders do come together. And it, it demonstrates how helpful and important it is when people trust public health. That's what we want ultimately. And so the more we can lean into that, even in those times when you know, we are finding ourselves at a loss for what to say uh, or what to point to that's working, we can trust that there are things that, that have worked, right? There are advancements that we've made 
um, there's there's a rainbow here <laughs> um, in what we've done, and all is not lost uh, in terms of the greater good. So that's one one area that I that I lean on. Another another principle though that I that I absolutely lean on, and where we we haven't um, seen as much progress, to be honest, is the principle of advancing justice and recognizing that no innovation is really a worthwhile unless it is reaching uh, as many as possible um, who require it. And so what has it looked like during this pandemic um, for us to ensure that um, we're reaching those in need everywhere they are in our country and around the world? And this has been a pretty hard chapter to write in this story and one that thankfully is still being written, um, but we're at an important point where we need to recognize um, the legacy that we leave depending on our actions. And those are individual and institutional actions um, that will sort of uh, change the course of, of what this looks like for, for a lot of people who need us to show up in the right way. And it's not just about us protecting ourselves, uh, although that is arguably part of it, I think ideally it's about doing what's right. And it's about uh, really um, making a commitment um, to uh, people who might not have a choice in the matter, right? And so when you think about um, what, uh, what really leads to these inequities that we have seen, that COVID has um, sort of laid there, I mean, we've, we've always known that uh, health disparities were a reality, especially for the people who experienced them. And yet we needed to be reminded um, in the midst of this pandemic. And ideally, we, we won't need a reminder thereafter, um, but we have to absolutely recognize uh, the truths uh, that, that have now been revealed yet again in terms of access or lack thereof and, and make some real commitments uh, to how we address those. I'm glad that our government has stepped up uh, to make those types of commitments. Uh, and furthermore, uh, we need to see all governments, including ours, follow through with real action. So that's a that's a that's something that guides me um, in terms of, of, again, these questions that we have about what more can or should be done uh, and perhaps something that can, can guide you too. I can't talk about justice though without also acknowledging everything else that's taken place around this pandemic that is added to its weight. So in addition to seeing black and brown people, for example, experience higher rates of hospitalization and yes, death uh, as a result of this virus, virus and its variants and, and, and everything uh, in between. Uh, we also know that just living and grieving with these demographics has been difficult for, for these communities and individuals. And that's devastating. It should never be the case that where one lives or how one is born uh, is really having as much of a negative impact uh, as it has on someone's livelihood or life, period. And yet here we are with having experienced this over the past year. And so it's recognizing the, the weight of coupling these two things, the pandemic with injustice and how they come together uh, is something that, that has weighed on me over time. And I'm sure it's weighed on many of you as well. And so I guess that brings me to uh, sort of the third and final principle that I, I lean on and that I share with you all today. <sighs> the importance of breathing, um, the importance of rest, the importance of acknowledging how hard a lot of this is or really can be. Um, it might seem basic. Um, it might even sound trite or cliche, but trust me, I know how hard the work is. I never thought it could be this hard. I never imagined that we would be working on the things that we read about in textbooks or saw in films or, you know, maybe did a mock scenario about. We're, we're, this is sort of our, you know, one of our greatest nightmares, right, is living through a pandemic and, you know, trying to save ourselves and the world working together um, from what can be a really scary and understandably so, um, risk, right, for, for each of us. And yet uh, we have to last in this. We have to ensure that we're 
caring for ourselves in the midst of, of so much um, that we are trying to manage. Many of you have worked in bands or in legislatures, or perhaps in clinics or corporations, or you're walking into those types of roles. And so you should know that we are being tapped and taxed as local health professionals or public health professionals like never before. And so uh, this is something that uh, will, is the case today, will arguably remain the case for some time. And even if we're not dealing with COVID, right, we're dealing with a number of other conditions that require our attention. And so, you know, it's okay to be tired. It's okay to be anxious, you know, and wonder if you're doing it right, if you're doing it well, and it's okay to press pause. Uh, and, you know, step back and ask, okay, well, what can I do to ensure that I can sustain this energy and momentum uh, in this journey and this fight? And because that's what we need, especially as you all are coming into this space um, and, and signing up um, to be supportive, to, to lead in the ways that I know you can. We want to be sure that you can do exactly that, right? Uh, it's, a, it's a marathon, and sometimes it's a sprint. Um, but, but most importantly, the, the journey is long. And so the story should be too. Please do keep that in mind as you, as you move forward. So that's where I'll end things. Um, as I said, you know, there's, a, there's a lot to, to look back on. I think that the story is still very much being written. Know that you are welcome to write your chapters as well. And I'd be very much uh, looking forward to, to reading what we all have to say about this journey we've been on together. I have, I know you have no idea <laughs> what's in store for you, uh, or perhaps I can't fully imagine what awaits you here in the world of public health, but know that you are absolutely welcome and know that you're going to be great. Good luck, everyone. Lift every voice and sing till earth and heaven ring. Ring with the harmonies of liberty. Let our rejoicing rise high as the listening skies. Let it resound loud as the rolling sea. Sing a song full of the faith that the dark past has taught us. Sing a song full of the hope that the present has brought us. Facing the rising sun of our new day begun, let us march on till victory is won. Hatu Jumbo, what's good and hello. In honor of those of us who became shapeshifters with sheer will to navigate these ivory towers, like Metamorpha Megai and Harry Potter, I would like to speak to y'all in all three of my tongues. Ba'adayati ki faraja, a Kiswahili proverb that says, after hardship comes relief. As the country burned around us, we persevered to this monumental day of achievement. In order to celebrate today, I need to say what I have to say using a format of oral tradition that is ancestral to me. These past couple of years, I have felt the weight of so many stolen breaths. I have held my tongue for survival, and today I must speak in my vernacular to breathe. If this is a form of communication that is new to you, pay close attention. As I display my eloquence and diction in a way that may challenge your perception, see what you are witnessing is an act of liberation. Because when I speak, it's like there's a drum beat to my voice. I feel the support of my people. You see, people who look like me often sit in spaces with held breath. So for eight minutes and 46 seconds when he said, I can't breathe, it was the physical manifestation of the oxygen deprivation black and brown bodies experience daily. The COVID-19 pandemic swept in and prematurely took the final breaths of many, leaving partners, children, 
siblings, friends, with the weight of that loss pressing against their chest. I can't imagine the weight of the knee pressing against his neck, yes. Today, I think we all deserve to take a deep breath. Ba'ada ya thiki faraja. After hardship comes relief. I am certain when I tell you that today is our day. It doesn't matter how you got here. The fact that you finished as the country fell apart around us is a revolutionary act forever written in history. It's no mystery the power of collective resilience carried us through an endless sea of trauma. One of my many hopes is we will no longer hear final cries out to mamas as we press forward. Let's dedicate ourselves to a new code of ethics. There are roses who grew from concrete and were treated like weeds, uprooted by the state. Unfortunately, it's too late for the ever-growing list of names we have lost our voices saying. But as the future safeguards of public health, we must plant gardens that nourish. Today, let's begin to say, do no more harm. We often hear knowledge is power, but let me tell you that saying leaves me feeling sour with the bitter taste of white supremacy. I believe shared knowledge is power. So I encourage each and every one of us to reach out from these ivory towers with the tools we've had the privilege of gaining and share them with, with communities who are experts in their experience. El Fuhuanzia Moja, a thousand begins with one. And y'all, we are that one. As dark as it may get, there are always cracks that let the light in. In the moments it feels like a complete nightmare, I look to dreamers who carry on despite the reality of man-made borders. I will never get over the irony of illegally crossing borders created on stolen indigenous lands, native and indigenous graduates, Atani Kili. Graduates who are immigrants and descendants of immigrants, I recognize the struggle. Graduates who are descendants of enslaved Africans, I feel you. Asian American and Asian Pacific Islander graduates, I see you. My father always told me when you're going through a storm to never let your fear stop you in it, but drive through it. Whatever storms you had to go through to get here, class of 2021, I stand. It's a fact that we did that. Show yourself grace and kindness by accepting multiple truths can exist at once. Tears of joy and sadness can coexist at once. Learn to dance in the combination of rain. Be present in this moment as it is yours. Hold it with cherished fingers and it's okay to linger a while longer in the nostalgia. There should be no guilt or shame for your happiness. Silence the voice in your head that may question this and remind yourself it's okay today to choose joy. I have only one request of each of us as we begin our next chapter. Never stop learning. Ilimu haina muisho. Education never ends. Continue to be curious about yourself and others because the more we learn about one another, the less we are othered. The desire to be seen and treated as human is what binds us all. Don't fear the unknown because kupotea njia kidio, kujia njia. To get lost is to learn the way. Don't get trapped into thinking there's only one way. Live life with a framework of abundance. Be fueled by the idea of communities thriving, not by the images of communities dying. We've been conditioned to constantly think of what's next. I encourage you to fight this sense of urgency and just be. Get comfy in the present. It's a present not gifted to everyone. Grieve, laugh, cry, breathe, scream, whatever it is you need to do to take care of you. Because Audre Lorde said, caring for myself is not self-indulgence. It is self-preservation, and that is an act of political warfare. To be a graduate this year means you deserve the right to rest. So no stress if that's where you're at right now. You'll thank yourself tomorrow. Kua Njema Kuako, Ashe, be well, and take care of yourselves as well as take care of one another. Now, to welcome us to the SPH alumni community, please help me welcome Liesl Miller-Hargens to the stage.
Thank you, Tricia, for that incredible speech. Um, I am incredibly inspired by you, and I'm so excited to welcome you to the School of Public Health alumni community. Greetings, class of 2021. My name is Liesl Hargens, and I received my master's from the School of Public Health in epidemiology. I am currently the president of the alumni board for the School of Public Health, and I'm also the senior director of health economics at Boston Scientific. It's my honor and privilege to welcome all of you to the School of Public Health Alumni Association today. The first degrees and certificates in public health were awarded by the University of Minnesota in 1935. That's a lot of alumni. These individuals span the state, the country, and the globe. We're a strong network of leaders committed to public health and to improving the health and well-being of people around the world. As a graduate of the School of Public Health, each one of you now belongs to the Alumni Society. There's no need to fill out a form or sign up. You're already part of the club and part of our team of public health practitioners. I strongly suggest you, come out with the, you connect with this amazing network. You can become a mentor, join our alumni board, and contribute to the academic experiences for students who follow in your footsteps. You can attend events, make donations to support scholarships, or become a preceptor. Opportunities to give back abound. And here's what we promise you. The more you put into the alumni society, the more you'll get from it. Just like in your student experience, the more you engage and the more you invest in building relationships, the more you benefit from our strong and engaged alumni network. The Alumni Society offers you a network of colleagues and mentors as you navigate your early career and as you grow as a professional. The network is more critical now with the challenges in front of us. So one more time, let me say congratulations to the class of 2021 and welcome. I am proud to call you a colleague, a peer, and a fellow alum of the School of Public Health. Part of our commencement tradition is to invite the incoming School of Public Health Student Senate President to lead our new graduates in the Public Health Professionals Pledge. Please help me welcome Emily McGuire, a Master of Public Health Student and Community Health Promotion and incoming School of Public Health Student Senate President to the podium. Thank you, Liesl. As mentioned, it is tradition for the incoming student senate president to join the graduates for the public health pledge. This statement affirms our shared goal in promoting the health of populations, and it unites us as a profession. Despite our physical distance, we are united by a common commitment to public health. It is an honor to lead you in the pledge this year. Please stand as you are able, wherever you are, and read along with me. As a public health professional dedicated to enhancing the health status and well being of individuals and communities, I pledge to hold the public interest and health of populations as my high professional goals. Congratulations, School of Public Health, Class of 2021. University Board of Regents member Regent Powell will now confer your degrees. Greetings, graduates and families, faculty and staff, distinguished guests, everyone joining us. I am honored to preside at this commencement on behalf of the University of Minnesota Board of Regents. To the graduates, I extend congratulations. Through your talent, hard work, and determination, you have earned this day of recognition. We not only celebrate your academic accomplishments, but also the potential you have to make a positive difference in the next stage of your lives. You'll be contributing to your communities, the state of Minnesota, the nation, and even the world. To all the family and friends joining from near and far, thank you for the countless ways you've supported these students as they earned their academic degrees. In keeping with commencement tradition, will the graduates please rise as they are able. Upon the recommendation of the faculty and by the authority of the regents, I now confer upon you the degrees for which you have qualified. Congratulations to every single one of you. 
Thank you, Regent Powell. And thank you also to Lois Pace. Uh, hers is a message that we are so much in need of as a nation right now. The need for science, the need for justice, and sustaining our struggle forward for a better world for everyone. And Tricia, what can I say? Thank you for your insights into the lived experience of racism and the persevering struggle for social justice, learning, and change. And in this challenge and experience of COVID-19, that we as a country may yet see great promise turned to sustained change. And my appreciation to you all for honoring our graduates today. Commencement, of course, means the beginning, not the end. And today is surely that for our graduates. Public health became a household phrase again this past year. And may this new recognition go with you in forging your career paths. There is a growing appreciation of how public health can save lives, how it can prevent illness and promote human thriving if we are focused and funded to drive this mission. I wish you well as you step forward as representatives of public health and begin your essential work. And I hope that you are as proud of yourselves as we are of you. So with the presentation of candidates for degrees, we will now play as we conclude our ceremony. And the list of names will follow the commencement program, which is located on the SPH website. Please stay connected to our school community. Stay well and thank you and have a good evening. And now go and celebrate, safely of course. Thank you. Mm -hmm.